Hey everyone, and welcome to another Star Citizen video. My name is Scary Spikes, and today we're going to be taking a look at the Mighty Mule from Drake Interplanetary, a brand new ground vehicle introduced in this year's Invictus celebrations. Before we get started though, a huge thank you to all of my wonderful channel members and patrons for making videos like these possible. If you find my videos helpful and would like to help yourself, you can click the blue join button down below right beside the red subscribe button to become a channel member here on YouTube, or click the link in the description to become one of my amazing patrons. Thank you so much for all of your support, and let's get started with this video. Alright folks, so we're on the beautiful moon of Daymar, and let's go ahead and have a closer look at the Drake Mule. For those of you who don't know, it was released in 317.1, that was the Drake Defense Con conference during the very popular Invictus Week, one of the two main sales, as it were, uh, during uh, the year for Star Citizen, and it is a transport ground vehicle, which is uh, very interesting indeed. It has a lot of very unique features, but we'll go ahead and go over those as we have a look around the ship. Now, if you're brand new to my videos, generally speaking with these tours, we like to look at the outside first, then of course we head to the inside, and then we'll talk about upgrades. But just a heads up, we're not gonna be doing upgrades for this particular vessel. And that's just because there's only really size zero components here, and you're not going to see much benefit from actually upgrading any of those. Now you can still do that if you'd like to, but honestly there's no point, and uh, we're just gonna go ahead and have a nice detailed exterior tour followed by an interior tour. And then I'll just follow that up with my thoughts and let you know whether it's worth it, as there are a number of options available with LTI for Warbond, 120 month insurance, as well as a variety of packs that this thing comes in available in the RSI store right now. Alrighty, so let's go ahead and look at the front of this thing. Now, uh, the first thing that sort of stands out to me are these lights up here. And uh, I don't know, man, they kind of look like eyebrows on a robot face. I don't know if you guys kind of get that feeling as well, but uh, hopefully these are bright enough. I guess we'll see in a moment because we've got the sun setting on Daymar here. So we're going to have a look and see how bright these are once we hop into the cockpit. But of course, we're going to have a look at the exterior of the vehicle first. Now, we do have uh, some more lights here. We've got two more flanking the port and the starboard side of the main canopy, which is very large and in charge. Looks like you're going to be able to see very well outside of that thing. So again, for safety, working with uh, equipment like this, definitely going to be a plus. And it does look like we have some additional lights on the front here as well, which are flanked by what appears to be an electromagnetic forklift. More on that later. Let's go ahead and move around the side of the vehicle here, though, where you'll be able to see some more of its interesting features. Now we can see that we have three very large wheels on this side and on the other side as well. And if you're thinking that these are comparatively large uh, when we're looking at the size of the actual frame of the vehicle and the chassis, then yeah, you'd be right. They are actually quite big. And I think that the reason for this is because it's, it is an industrial vehicle and you do want to be able to move around in all sorts of different environments safely and efficiently. And as you can see, being on Daymar, it's definitely a bit of a rough environment. We have a number of rocks and uh, of course there are hills and valleys and things like that. I know that you're not always going to be in those areas, but it's definitely nice to see a vehicle that's equipped to handle just about everything. Now we do have some buttons over here as well. Uh, now this is an electric vehicle I should mention, so we do have some batteries here as well. Uh, I guess you could call this the Drake Cybertruck, so to speak. Um, but then we also have something that I, it actually really surprised me, and that is internal storage on something of this size. That's very, very interesting. Of course, you're not going to be getting a lot of storage, but having a little bit is definitely helpful. Moving on, you can see that we have some very obvious features on the side here. These are going to be your main cargo racks, and I'll show you what that looks like. If we go ahead and take our armor and drag that off, you'll see that we have a box, and the box is what you're going to be able to put up here. Now, anything of this size is what you'll be able to put up there. Nothing larger, unfortunately, but as you can see, it fits perfectly there, and uh, that's going to be nice for bringing extra gear and stuff like that with you as you're moving things around. So we'll go ahead and equip this again, and then we'll move towards the rear or the aft of this ship or this vehicle, and uh, we'll be able to see a few more interesting features here. Now on the back, of course, we have some brake lights and what does appear to be either some reverse lights here or possibly some reflectors. And what you can see here is actually some barrel that I've picked up from the Shubin mining facility. Now this is going to be a one SCU container and it's pretty much the limit of what you can carry in terms of volume. But still a one SCU container for something of this size is definitely very impressive and really nice to see. Now we've got one more thing here to show you on the back of the ship. What you can see here is we've got a pair of uh, power plants. So that's very nice. I do really like how that actually comes down and meets the user 
very user friendly and we'll go ahead and bring those back in and then of course on the other side we do have some features that are symmetrical and some that are not of course the wheels and the cargo rack is symmetrical to the port side but we do have a few other buttons to press here a couple more actually than on the port side so we've got some components right here as you can see and then of course we also have a nice little fuel port which is very interesting to see because as you guys have seen uh, recently we have had a uh, 317 introduced ship to ship refueling and uh, i'm really interested to see how that's going to progress and advance into ground vehicles so very nice to see that we have some future friendly uh, refueling options here for this ground vehicle Alrighty, so that's going to do it for the exterior tour let's now go ahead and head into the inside and see what everything looks like from the operator's point of view. This thing is definitely really cool. And what I'm curious about is if you happen to own one of these, what are you going to plan to use it for? Let me know in the comments down below. But the ambiance in here looks really cool. Let's go ahead and start to take the tour from the top to the bottom. And as we can see, we do have a bunch of buttons up here. Four to be specific. We have an exit seat. We have an lock and unlock all doors as well as open door button. That's interesting. And then we've got an engine off and engine on, as well as a power off and power on button as well. Right below that, we've got a center mounted two dimensional radar flanked by a pair of MFDs on the left and the right side. And then the aforementioned very large window, as well as a nice light on either side for some nice ambient lighting. Down below, we have lots of legroom. And then, of course, we have a couple of sticks, one on either side. And then we have a couple of buttons on the right hand side for front and for rear. Unfortunately, the one for rear doesn't seem to be bound, but the one for the front is, and that's going to be the one for the forklift. So let's go ahead and check that out. First of all, there you can see this is how we look like outside. And as you can see, also these lights that were turquoise at first are now basically automatically on, as are the ones on the very front or the ramp that lets you enter the actual vehicle. So that's really, really cool. Let's go ahead and press L actually and see what the other lights look like. Okay, so that's not bad. That's actually pretty bright. Let's go ahead and have a look around. We might end up driving around Damar a little bit as the sun further sets below the hills, but that actually looks pretty good. It does look pretty bright. There is a little bit of a yellow tinge to it, but hey, you can pretty much expect that from most Drake vehicles anyway. Let's go ahead and deploy the forklift and see what that looks like. All right, so that's pretty cool. It is a little bit dark, so it's kind of hard to see, but uh, you can see that we have the two sides extended out. That's pretty damn cool, and I'm not really quite sure if this is working just yet, but I'm sure with 318 and the cargo refactor, this thing is definitely going to be super, super useful. So is the mule worth it, and would I recommend it to anybody? And the answer is yes and yes, but for different reasons. If you're like me and you're somebody who really enjoys transportation and logistics, then this is definitely a no-brainer, and once 3.18 and its cargo refactor comes by, you are going to be glad you have at least one of these, and that's why I'd recommend, especially if you have the money and you have larger ships, that you pick up at least two, because at the very best, you're going to have a couple of nice forklifts to move stuff around your big ships with, so that you don't have to do it by hand, and at the very worst, you're going to have a pair of either 120 month or lifetime insurance tokens, which you're going to be able to upgrade to other ships. Thank you so very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and that it was helpful to you. And if it was, please do make sure to hit that like button. Make sure to become a subscriber here on YouTube with notifications turned on as I produce videos weekly. Come on by and join me on stream 8 p.m. Wednesdays and Fridays over on Twitch. And of course, our wonderful Discord community, the links for which can be found down below. If you'd like to go above and beyond to help me out, of course, you can become a patron by using the link down below for all sorts of awesome perks or click the little blue join button beside the red subscribe button to become a channel member right here on YouTube. All of your support really means the world to me and I cannot make these videos without you. So thank you all so very much for helping me out with all of that. And I hope to see you in the next video.